do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hoped for. The things you really need are few and easy to come by, but the things you can imagine you need are infinite, and you will never be satisfied. He who is not satisfied with a little is satisfied with nothing. He who has peace of mind disturbs neither himself nor another. Not what we have but what we enjoy constitutes our abundance. Skillful pilots gain their reputation from storms and tempest. Happiness is man's greatest aim in life. Tranquility and rationality are the cornerstones of happiness. The greater the difficulty, the more the glory in surmounting it. To be rich is not the end but only a change of worries. Death, therefore, the most awful of evils is nothing to us seeing that when we are, death is not come, and when death is come we are not. Why should I fear death? If I am, death is not. If death is, I am not. Why should I fear that which can only exist when I do not? The art of living well and the art of dying well are one. Let no one be slow to seek wisdom when he is young, nor weary in the search of it when he has grown old. For no age is too early or too late for the health of the soul. Being happy is knowing how to be content with a little. Live your life without attracting attention. Do everything like someone is gazing at you. If you would enjoy real freedom, you must be the slave of philosophy. We have been born once and there can be no second birth. For all eternity we shall no longer be. But you, although you are not master of tomorrow, are postponing your happiness. You don't develop courage by being happy in your relationships every day. You develop it by surviving difficult times and challenging adversity. He who doesn't find a little enough will find nothing enough. Nothing is enough to the man for whom enough is too little. In a philosophical dispute he gains most who is defeated, since he learns most. Of all the means to ensure happiness throughout the whole life, by far the most important is the acquisition of friends. All friendship is desirable in itself, though it starts from the need of help. The noble soul occupies itself with wisdom and friendship. It is not so much our friend's help that helps us, as the confident knowledge that they will help us. To eat and drink without a friend is to devour like the lion and the wolf. The pleasant life is not produced by continual drinking and dancing, nor sexual intercourse, nor rare dishes of seafood and other delicacies of a luxurious table. On the contrary, it is produced by sober reasoning which examines the motives for every choice and avoidance, driving away beliefs which are the source of mental disturbances. He who needs riches least, enjoys riches most. Riches do not exhilarate us so much with their possession as they torment us with their loss. The wealth required by nature is limited and is easy to procure, but the wealth required by vain ideals extends to infinity. Fortune seldom troubles the wise man. Misfortune seldom intrudes upon the wise man. His greatest and highest interests are directed by reason throughout the course of life. The misfortune of the wise is better than the prosperity of the fool. If thou wilt make a man happy, add not unto his riches, but take away from his desires. It is better for you to be free of fear lying upon a pallet than to have a golden couch and a rich table and be full of trouble. A free life cannot acquire many possessions, because this is not easy to do without servility to mobs or monarchs. Men, believing in myths, will always fear something terrible. Everlasting punishment is certain or probable. Men base all these fears not on mature opinions, but on irrational fancies, that they are more disturbed by fear of the unknown than by facing facts. Peace of mind lies in being delivered from all these fears. What will happen to me if that which this desire seeks is achieved, and what if it is not? 
The fool's life is empty of gratitude and full of fears. Its course lies wholly toward the future. It is folly for a man to pray to the gods for that which he has the power to obtain by himself. We should look for someone to eat and drink with before looking for something to eat and drink. I have never wished to cater to the crowd for what I know they do not approve, and what they approve I do not know. The summit of pleasure is the elimination of all that gives pain. There is no such thing as justice in the abstract. It is merely a compact between men.